How's it going guys, it's Hermigrap here and Wanderer's rerun banner is available now and he has been a very fun character to use ever since his initial release way back when in version 3.3. So without any delay, let's get into it. So let's start with Wanderer's kit and we'll start off with his normal attack and this is his main way of dealing damage. His basic attack deals these blade-like animo projectiles at a long range, dealing animo damage to enemies and his charge attacks can deal lots of damage to multiple areas in an AoE. And his plunging attack is, well, a plunging attack. Nothing really special. Next is his skill. Wanderer's skill allows him to fly and go around and making exploration much easier than before, and even allowing you to reach areas without the need of spending stamina. In the overworld, you can use this skill to fly around, and in my opinion, is the best way to traverse around to that. You can also fly higher with him to get a better position to climb, while also keeping your stamina full and dash around the place to go super fast. However, in battle, using Wanderer's skill gives him the wind-favored state, which enhances his basic attacks and charge attacks, as well as dealing initial and mode damage to enemies close to him. Both damage and AoE of normal and charge attacks will be increased. During the skill's duration, your stamina bar will be converted into this green bar, and this green bar will continue to go down while you are hovering, and will go down even faster if you dash around, go higher, and use your charge attacks. If the green bar is depleted, then you lose the wind favored buff. Mind you, the green bar is not the stamina bar, which means you don't have to worry about your charge attacks deleting your stamina or drowning if you're fighting on top of water. Next, we go to his ult, where he fulfills the dreams of his stands and deals lots of animo damage in a pretty big AoE, dealing 5 instances of animo damage with a cooldown of 15 seconds and an energy cost of 60. This is a really good burst of damage, but not really the number one source of your damage output. So you can use it every chance you get or every other rotation. But keep in mind that as soon as you use his ultimate while he's in the wind favored state, he will lose that buff and plop to the floor. Next is his initial passive, which reduces the cost of ascending catalyst and bow weapons, which is fine. But this does not include leveling up the weapon, only ascending it which is sadly unimpressive unless you frequently use Catalyst and Bow characters. For his Ascension 1 passive, his skill gains a big upgrade. Basically put, if his skill comes into contact with Hydro, Pyro, Electro, or Cryo, basically the elements that react to Swirl, he will obtain up to two buffs depending on the contacted element. Hydro increases the max cap of his wind favored state, making you fly longer and increase the duration of the buff. Pyro increases your attack by 30%. Cryo increases your crit rate by 20%, and Electro, which will restore your energy for every time your normal and charge attacks hit an opponent every 0.2 seconds. You can carry up to two buffs, which will be seen on this wheel behind Wanderer and the color that corresponds to the element. Now, out of all the buffs, I personally like Pyro and Cryo the best, since that's free additional attack and crit rate. However, there is a buff priority in the game, which may interfere with the buffs you are trying to get with Pyro taking first priority, then Hydro, then Electro, and finally Cryo. Of course it's a crit stat that takes least priority. Of course it is. They're probably trying to say something. Next is his Ascension 4 passive, which gives your dash while you're in the wind favored state to deal additional offense. With every time you hit an enemy with your enhanced normal and charge attacks, you have a chance to obtain the passive, and you will notice the passive with an audio cue and when you see Wanderer glow momentarily. When you have the buff, you can dash and he will fire 4 homing animo missiles at your enemies, dealing 35% of his attack each. And if your enhanced attacks don't give you the buff, then your chances increase with every attack in the wind favored state until you get that glow. For priority, I recommend you prioritize his normal attack since that's where most of his damage is coming from, then your skills since it adds more damage to your enhanced attacks, and finally his ult for that sweet sweet burst damage. For his artifacts, his best in slot is obviously Desert Pavilion giving him additional animo damage, normal attack speed increase, and a huge overall normal attack damage increase with 40%. Another good one is the Shimanawa set, which will increase your normal attack damage, but at a cost of your energy, which means you will need even more energy from teammates, and probably need to run triple animo to make up for the energy loss, while also keeping your rotations running. You can also try Echoes of an Offering to buff up your normal attacks, but ping will be a massive issue. So if you have problems with ping, then I really don't recommend this set. You can also try 2-piece animo damage and 2-piece attack, or 2-piece animo and 2-piece animo, or 2-piece attack and 2-piece attack. However, it's way better to focus more on the 2-piece animo sets because you can rely on the attack increase from external factors like Bennett's ult and the pyro buff. 
When you have no other option, you can go for 4-piece VV due to it being the usual or fallback option for most animal characters. But since Wanderer is a DPS, and VV is best suited for supports like Sucrose and Kazuha, you really won't get much from this set. However, the one I have on my Wanderer is 2-piece Animo and 2-piece Elemental Mastery to prioritize swirl damage, but that's just how I play. For stats, you'll want to go for the typical DPS stats with Attack Sands, Element Goblet, in this case Animo Goblet, and Crit Circlet. Considering that Wanderer's Ascension stat is Crit Rate, I do recommend you get a Crit Damage Circlet. But if you have a crit damage weapon, then go for crit rate instead and vice versa. Speaking of weapons, let's go to the recommended weapons for Wanderer. First is obviously his signature which increases his normal attack speed and damage output, especially when you use his skill and goes super well with Wanderer in general with a crit damage stat tying it all together. Another good one is Lost Prayers with a crit rate stat and additional movement speed and elemental damage bonus which can stack. Next is Skyward Atlas, but only if you don't have Bennett in your team, to further increase your attack and give your normal attacks a chance to deal additional damage every 30 seconds. An interesting one is Cashflow Supervision, but I recommend this if you're gonna use Farina with Wanderer to maximize the HP Increase Decrease Clause, alongside providing Crit Rate, Attack Boost, and Normal and Charge Attack Damage Increase. If you have the stacks fluctuating with your HP bar, then you have your Max 3 stacks, You'll get an additional attack speed increase, but you'll need to switch up the artifact to Mare Hunter since it'll benefit way more than the other artifacts. Other 5-star options are Kagura's Verity and Tomb of the Eternal Flow just for the crit damage increase since they're more of stat sticks than anything. For 4-star options, Widsith is an obvious one for crit damage and just the best 4-star option in general. Solar Pearl is kind of okay, but the crit stat increase is appreciated, however certain players may not want to pay for the battle pass. Black Cliff is okay since it's another crit weapon, however, Widsith is still way better, and Dodoko Tails helps if you have it. But let's go to Boundless Blue. So Boundless Blue is pretty good for normal attack and charge attack damage increase, but its main stat is energy recharge instead of the other prioritized stats like crit and attack. So basically, if you don't have any other option from 5-star or the 4-stars mentioned, since you either don't have them or other characters are using them, then Wanderer can use Boundless Blue as a last resort. Next, we'll talk about his constellations. So his C1 increases his enhanced basic attack and charge attack speed, as well as buffing the damages from his Animo Dash missiles. His C2 is really good, since it increases the damage of your ult by the amount of missing points you have in your win favored bar. So the best tactic for this is to use your skill and continue your normal and charge attacks. Then, as the bar is about to go empty, that's when you use your ult. This way, the damage of your ult can increase to a maximum of 200% which is absolutely insane. C3 and C5 increase your ult and skill respectively like normal. C4 will randomly give you a third buff for your skill that you don't have. So let's say you got a Hydro and Pyro buff. Then from this constellation, you can get either Electro or Cryo buff as a bonus, which will help with stats and taking out enemies very quickly. And finally, C6, which will give him two passives for his win favorite state. He will make more Wind Blades from his enhanced basic attack that will deal 40% of the original attack's damage, and this will count as normal attack damage. Then, if he has less than 40 points in his win favored bar, he will automatically gain 4 points in that bar every 0.2 seconds for up to 5 times. This means that he will last much longer in his enhanced state, especially when dealing lots of enhanced basic attacks and charge attacks. Going to his teams, it's either one of the two very broad options, with or without Faruzan. Faruzan is just really, really good with other animal characters, and she blends very well with Wanderer as a battery. However, Faruzan is very odd since she is so dependent on her C6 to make things easier, while the lesser constellations you have, the harder it is for her to get the necessary energy recharge, with the worst case scenario being 300% energy recharge for her to be a very good support for Wanderer. So, if you're gonna include Faruzan with Wanderer, then I recommend adding Bennett as your buffer and healer, then you have a flex slot, which can be open to various options like off-field DPS like Yelan, Xingqiu, and Chengling, or additional animal units like Venti, Kazuha, or Sucrose, attack speed buffers like C6 Yunjin and Mika, or shielders like Zhongli, Toma, and Layla. I recommend triple animo if your Faruzan isn't up to par, and shielders if she is. For Faruzan-less teams, I recommend Wanderer, Xiangling, Bennett, and Kazuha for a nice double elemental resonance, but since it has no shielders, you'll need to be very quick and alert with your environment. If you want a shielder in this team, then replace Xiangling with Toma for that pyro resonance or Zhongli for a superior shield. 
Next is Wanderer, Fischl, Beidou, and Xingqiu as a Taser team, and then Wanderer Hyper Bloom. However, these are more for him as a driver and not really the best option to use since Sucrose is usually the best option for these driver teams. But if you really want some fun teams to use, you can try out Wanderer, Shangling, Kaya, and Kuki Shinobu just to stick a whole bunch of stuff on Wanderer like the Avatar. For a niche team like I mentioned before, you can give Wanderer Cashflow Supervision as his weapon, Mare Hunter as his artifact set, add Farina in the team with healers like Charlotte, and flex options like a Shielder or another Animo support. This team definitely makes Wanderer very reliant on his enhanced normal attacks, but this is a very niche team. However, if you want to try this out, it could be a very interesting way to play. For combos, if you have Farazan, start with Farazan's skill, then her charge attack, then her ult. Then other supports like Bennett's skill and ult, and flex options, skill and ult, then Wanderer's charge attack, skill, then basic attack or charge attack combo, then ult just when the bar is near the end, then Bennett's skill, then repeat. But if your flex slot is a shielder like Zhongli, start off with the shield, then Farazan, then so on. For Farazan less teams, shielder combo first, then off field combo, then wanderer charge attack, skill, basic attack, charge attack combo, the ult, and repeat. Overall, I think that wanderer is super fun to play and even more fun to traverse around, and I still think that his kit, teams, and such still hold up. But that C6 Farazan is a huge necessity for him due to her animo shred and damage boost. But nonetheless, Wanderer still holds up and can be a very good DPS for your team, even without his signature weapon. He's a great hyper carry option and can be used even as the only 5 star in the team. If you're going for Wanderer to add to your roster or go for his constellations, I hope you get him early and may your pulls be blessed. Thank you guys for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel with post notifications on. Shout out to Oopsiefull for the support and let's go to 1000 subscribers by the end of the year. And as always, I'm Hermit Grab, and I'll see you soon.